The New Zealand national cricket team, nicknamed the Black Caps, played their first test in 1930 against England in Christchurch, becoming the fifth country to play test cricket. From 1930 New Zealand had to wait until 1956, more than 26 years, for its first test victory, against the West Indies at Eden Park in Auckland. They played their first ODI in the 1972–73 season against Pakistan in Christchurch. The current test, one day and 2020 captain is Kane Williamson, who replaced Brendan McCullum who announced his retirement in late December, 2015. The national team is organised by New Zealand Cricket. The New Zealand cricket team became known as the Black Caps in January 1998, after its sponsor at the time, Clear Communications, held a competition to choose a name for the team. Official New Zealand cricket sources typeset the nickname as BLACKCAPS. This is one of many national team nicknames related to the All Blacks. As of 7 December 2018, New Zealand have played 429 test matches, winning 94, losing 171 and drawing 164. The team is ranked 4th in tests, 3rd in Otis and 6th in T20 as by the ICC. New Zealand reached the final match in the ICC Cricket World Cup for the first time in its history, after beating South Africa in the semi-final in 2015. Topic History Topic <laughs> Beginnings of Cricket in New Zealand The Reverend Henry Williams provided history with the first report of a game of cricket in New Zealand, when he wrote in his diary in December 1832 about boys in and around Paihia on Horatutu Beach playing cricket. In 1835, Charles Darwin and HMS Beagle called into the Bay of Islands on its epic circumnavigation of the earth and Darwin witnessed a game of cricket played by freed Maori slaves and the son of a missionary at Waimati North. Darwin in The Voyage of the Beagle wrote, Several young men redeemed by the missionaries from slavery were employed on the farm. In the evening I saw a party of them at cricket. The first recorded game of cricket in New Zealand took place in Wellington in December 1842. The Wellington Spectator reports a game on 28 December 1842 played by a red team and a blue team from the Wellington Club. The first fully recorded match was reported by the examiner in Nelson between the surveyors and Nelson in March 1844. The first team to tour New Zealand was Pars All England 11 in 1863-64. Between 1864 and 1914, 22 foreign teams toured New Zealand. England sent six teams, Australia 15 and one from Fiji. First national team On 15–17 February 1894 the first team representing New Zealand played New South Wales at Lancaster Park in Christchurch. New South Wales won by 160 runs. New South Wales returned again in 1895–96 and New Zealand won the solitary game by 142 runs, its first victory. The New Zealand Cricket Council was formed towards the end of 1894. New Zealand played its first two internationals not tests in 1904–05 against a star-studded Australia team containing such players as Victor Trumper, Warwick Armstrong and Clem Hill. Rain saved New Zealand from a thrashing in the first match, but not the second, which New Zealand lost by an innings and 358 runs, currently the second largest defeat in New Zealand first-class history. Inter-war period In 1927 NZ toured England. They played 26 first-class matches, mostly against county sides. They managed to beat Worcestershire, Glamorgan, Somerset, and Derbyshire. On the strength of the performances of this tour New Zealand was granted test status. In 1929-30 the MCC toured NZ and played four tests all of three days in duration. New Zealand lost its first test match but drew the next three. In the second test Stewie Dempster and Jackie Mills put on 276 for the first wicket. This is still the highest partnership for New Zealand against England. 
New Zealand first played South Africa in 1931–32 in a three-match series but were unable to secure test matches against any teams other than England before World War II ended all test cricket for seven years. New Zealand's first test after the war was against Australia in 1945–46. This game was not considered a test at the time but it was granted test status retrospectively by the International Cricket Council in March 1948. The New Zealand players who appeared in this match probably did not appreciate this move by the ICC as New Zealand were dismissed for 42 and 54. The New Zealand Cricket Council's unwillingness to pay Australian players a decent allowance to tour New Zealand ensured that this was the only test Australia played against New Zealand between 1929 and 1972. Topic: After World War II. In 1949, New Zealand sent one of its best ever sides to England. It contained Bert Sutcliffe, Martin Donnelly, John R. Reid, and Jack Cowie. However, three-day Test matches ensured that all four Tests were drawn. Many have regarded the 1949 tour of England among New Zealand's best ever touring performances. All four tests were high scoring despite being draws and Martin Donnelly's 206 at Lords hailed as one of the finest innings ever seen there. Despite being winless, New Zealand did not lose a test either. Prior to this, only the legendary 1948 Australian team, led by the great Don Bradman, had achieved this. New Zealand played its first matches against the West Indies in 1951-52, and Pakistan and India in 1955-56. In 1954–55 New Zealand recorded the lowest ever innings total, 26 against England. The following season New Zealand achieved its first test victory. The first three tests of a four-test series were won easily by the West Indies but New Zealand won the fourth to notch up its first test victory. It had taken them 45 matches and 26 years to attain. In the next 20 years New Zealand won only seven more tests. For most of this period New Zealand lacked a class bowler to lead their attack although they had two excellent batsmen in Bert Sutcliffe and Glenn Turner and a great all-rounder in John R. Reid. Reid captained New Zealand on a tour to South Africa in 1961-62 where the five-test series was drawn 2-2. The victories in the third and fifth tests were the first overseas victories New Zealand achieved. Reed scored 1,915 runs in the tour, setting a record for the most runs scored by a touring batsman of South Africa as a result. New Zealand won their first Test series in their three match 1969 70 tour of Pakistan 1 0. Topic: 1970 to 2000. In 1973 Richard Hadley debuted and the rate at which New Zealand won tests picked up dramatically. Hadley was one of the best pace bowlers of his generation, playing 86 tests for New Zealand, before he retired in 1990. Of the 86 tests that Hadley played in New Zealand won 22 and lost 28. In 1977-78 New Zealand won its first test against England, at the 48th attempt. Hadley took 10 wickets in the match. During the 1980s New Zealand also had the services of one of its best ever batsmen, Martin Crow, and a number of good players such as John Wright, Bruce Edgar, John F. Reed, Andrew Jones, Jeff Howarth, Jeremy Coney, Ian Smith, John Bracewell, Lance Cairns, Stephen Book, and Ewan Chatfield, who were capable of playing the occasional match-winning performance and consistently making a valuable contribution to a test match. The best example of New Zealand's two star players are Hadley and M. Crow putting in match-winning performances and other players making good contributions as New Zealand vs. Australia, 1985 at Brisbane. In Australia's first innings Hadley took 9-52. In New Zealand's only turn at bat, M. Crow scored 188 and John F. Reid 108. Edgar, Wright, Coney, Jeff Crow, V. Brown, and Hadley scored between 17 and 54 asterisk. In Australia's second innings, Hadley took 6-71 and Chatfield 3-75. New Zealand won by an innings and 41 runs. One-day cricket also gave New Zealand a chance to compete more regularly than test cricket with the better sides in world cricket. In one-day cricket a batsman does not need to score centuries to win games for his side and bowlers do not need to bowl the opposition out. 
One day games can be won by one batsman getting a 50, a few others getting 30s, bowlers bowling economically and everyone fielding well. These were requirements New Zealand players could consistently meet and thus developed a good one-day record against all sides. Perhaps New Zealand's most infamous one-day match was the underarm match against Australia at the MCG in 1981. Requiring six runs to tie the match off the final ball, Australian captain Greg Chappelle instructed his brother Trevor to bowl the ball underarm along the wicket to prevent New Zealand batsman Brian McKechnie from hitting a six. The Australian umpires ruled the move as legal even though to this day many believe it was one of the most unsporting decisions made in cricket. When New Zealand next played in the Tri-Series in Australia in 1983, Lance Cairns became a cult hero for his one-day batting. In one match against Australia, he hit six sixes at the MCG, one of the world's largest grounds. Few fans remember that New Zealand lost this game by 149 runs. However, Lance's greatest contribution to New Zealand cricket was his son Chris Cairns. Chris Cairns made his debut one year before Hadley retired in 1990. Cairns, one of New Zealand's best all-arounders, led the 1990s bowling attack with Danny Morrison. Stephen Fleming, New Zealand's most prolific scorer, led the batting and the team into the 21st century. Nathan Astle and Craig McMillan also scored plenty of runs for New Zealand, but both retired earlier than expected. Daniel Vittori made his debut as an 18-year-old in 1997, and when he took over from Fleming as captain in 2007 he was regarded as the best spinning all-arounder in world cricket. On 26 August 2009, Daniel Vittori became the eighth player and second left-arm bowler after Chaminda Voss in history to take 300 wickets and score 3,000 test runs, joining the illustrious club. Vittori decided to take an indefinite break from international short-form cricket in 2011 but will continue to represent New Zealand in test cricket and returned for the 2015 Cricket World Cup. On 4 April 1996, New Zealand achieved a unique world record, where the whole team was adjudged man of the match for team performance against four-run victory over the West Indies. This is recorded as the only time where whole team achieved such an award. Topic: 21st century. New Zealand started the new millennium by winning the 2000 ICC Knockout Trophy in Kenya to claim their first, and so far, only ICC tournament. They started with a 64-run win over Zimbabwe then proceeded to beat Pakistan by four wickets in the semi-final. In the final against India, Chris Cairns scored an unbeaten 102 in New Zealand's run chase helping them win the tournament. Shane Bond played 17 tests for NZ between 2001 and 2007 but missed far more through injury. When fit, he added a dimension to the NZ bowling attack that had been missing since Hadley retired. The rise of the financial power of the BCCI had an immense effect on NZ cricket and its players. The BCCI managed to convince other boards not to pick players who had joined the rival 2020 Indian Cricket League. NZ Cricket lost the services of Shane Bond, Lou Vincent, Andre Adams, Hamish Marshall and Daryl Tuffy. The money to be made from 2020 cricket in India may have also induced players, such as Craig McMillan and Scott Styrus from Test Cricket to retire earlier than they would have otherwise. After the demise of the Indian Cricket League Bond and Tuffy again played for New Zealand. Vittori stood down as Test Captain in 2011 leading to star batsman Ross Taylor to take his place. Taylor led New Zealand for a year which included a thrilling win in a low-scoring test match against Australia in Hobart, their first win over Australia since 1993. In 2012-13 Brendan McCullum became captain and new players such as Kane Williamson, Corey Anderson, Doug Bracewell, Trent Bolt and Jimmy Neesham emerged as world-class performers. McCullum captained New Zealand to series wins against the West Indies and India in 2013-14 and both Pakistan and Sri Lanka in 2014-15 increasing New Zealand's rankings in both Test and ODI formats. In the series against India McCullum scored 302 at Wellington to become New Zealand's first Test triple centurion. 
In early 2015 New Zealand made the final of the Cricket World Cup, going through the tournament undefeated until the final, where they lost to Australia by seven wickets. In 2015 the New Zealand national cricket team played under the name of Aotearoa for their first match against Zimbabwe to celebrate Maori Language Week, J. In mid-2015 New Zealand toured England, performing well, drawing the Test Series 1-1, and losing the one-day series, 2-3. In October to December 2015, and in February 2016, New Zealand played Australia in two test series, in three and two games apiece. With a changing of an era in the Australian team, New Zealand was rated as a chance of winning especially in New Zealand. New Zealand lost both series by 2-0. <laughs> International grounds Topic current squad This is a list of active players, who have played for New Zealand in the last year since the 1st of November 2016. Players in bold have a central contract for 2018-19. Not on this list are Jeetan Patel and Luke Ranchi, who have played for New Zealand in this time frame, but subsequently retired from international cricket. Topic. Coaching staff Head coach, Gary Stead Batting coach, Craig McMillan Bowling coach, Shane Jurgensen Strength and conditioning coach, Chris Donaldson Teams manager, Mike Sandel Physiotherapist, Tommy Simsek Performance analyst, Paul Warren Media correspondent, Willie Nichols Topic. Team colors New Zealand's kit is manufactured by Canterbury of New Zealand, who replaced previous manufacturer W Star in 2009. When playing test cricket, New Zealand's cricket whites feature the silver fern badge on the left of the shirt, the name and logo of the sponsors Amul on the right, the Ford logo on the left sleeve and the Canterbury logo on the right sleeve. New Zealand fielders may wear a black cap in the style of a baseball cap rather than the baggy cap worn by some teams or a white sun hat with the New Zealand cricket logo in the middle. Helmets are also colored black although until 1996, they used to be white with the silver fern logo encased in a black circle. In limited overs cricket, New Zealand's ODI and 2020 shirts feature the ANZ logo across the centre, with the silver fern badge on the left of the shirt, Canterbury logo on the right sleeve and the Ford logo on the right. In Otis, the kit comprises a black shirt with blue accents and black trousers, whilst the 2020 kit comprises a beige shirt with black accents and black trousers. In ICC limited overs tournaments, a modified kit design is used with sponsors' logos moving to the sleeve and New Zealand printed across the front. In ODI, New Zealand wore beige and brown between 1980 World Series cricket and 1988 World Series cricket. The 1983–1984 version was made popular by the Black Caps supporter group Beige Brigade, who sells the version of this uniform to the general public together with a moral contract which explains the expectations that come with being a beige brigadier, and was also worn in the inaugural 2020 international between New Zealand and Australia. Between 1991 and 1997 grey or silver with some splashes of black or white was worn instead. Until 2000, the ODI uniform was teal with black accents. Previous suppliers were Adidas World Series Cricket 1980 to 1990, ISC World Cup World Cup 1992 and 1996, World Series 1993 to 97, Canterbury 1998-1999, ASICS who supplied all the 1999 Cricket World Cup participating teams and W Star 2000 to 2009. Previous sponsors were DB Draft 1990 to 1994 in the front 1995 to 1997 in the sleeve Bank of New Zealand 1993-94 and 1997 to 99 in the front Clear Communications later Telstra Clear 1997 to 2000 in the front 2001 to 2005 in the sleeve National Bank of New Zealand 2000 to 2014 and Diraj and East Coast 2009-2010 since 2014 ANZ is the current sponsor, due to national banks rebranding as ANZ. As of May 2017, Amul became the new sponsor. Topic: 
Tournament history ICC Cricket World Cup As of 29 March 2015 The win percentage excludes no results and counts ties as half a win. ICC Champions Trophy As of 23 June 2013 the win percentage excludes no results and counts ties as half a win. <inaudible> ICC World 2020 As of 28 March 2016 Tie plus one and tie plus lost indicates matches tied and then won or lost in a tiebreaker such as a bowlout or one over eliminator. Super over. The result percentage excludes no results and counts ties irrespective of a tiebreaker as half a win. Topic: <laughs> Commonwealth Games. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> World Championship of Cricket. Topic: <laughs> Austral Asia Cup 1986 semi finals 1990 semi finals 1994 semi finals Topic Result Summary Topic Test Matches Topic One Day International Matches Topic T twenty International Matches Topic Series Results Topic Test matches As of the seventh of December twenty eighteen. Topic One Day Internationals As of the eleventh of November twenty eighteen. The One Day International Series results only counts bilateral series and excludes multinational tournaments. Topic twenty twenty internationals As of the fifth of January twenty eighteen The twenty twenty international series results only counts bilateral series and excludes multinational tournaments. The win percentage counts drawn series as half a win. Topic Records Topic World Records Richard Hadley, one of New Zealand and the world's best all rounders, took the world record for most Test wickets 374 versus India at Bangalore in 1988. Hadley was the first bowler to reach 400 Test wickets, versus India at Christchurch in 1990, and finished his career with 431 wickets. He subsequently lost the record to Kapil Dev. Corey Anderson holds record for the second fastest century in one day internationals or any other format of international cricket. Playing against West Indies, he scored his ton in just 36 balls. Corey Anderson lost the record to A.B. de Villiers when A.B. scored a century in just 31 balls against West Indies. In a one-day international in 1996, the entire New Zealand team were awarded man of the match in this match against the West Indies, the first such occasion. Andrew Jones and Martin Crowe held the highest ever third wicket partnership in tests, with 467 against Sri Lanka in 1991, which at the time was the highest partnership for any wicket. 
Brian Hastings and Richard Collinge together scored 151 runs for the tenth wicket against Pakistan in 1973, the highest tenth wicket partnership at the time. Nathan Astle scored Test cricket's fastest ever double century versus England, at Christchurch in 2002. He scored 200 off 153 balls with the second hundred coming off just 39 deliveries. He was eventually out for 222. The dreaded double Nelson. He knocked the first hundred off 114 balls. Astle smashed the record by 59 balls, previously held by Adam Gilchrist Australia vs South Africa Johannesburg 2002. Brendan McCullum holds the world record for the fastest test hundred in terms of balls faced. It was scored off 54 balls on 20 February 2016, against Australia during his final test match, in Christchurch. Brendan McCullum holds the world record for the most sixes in Test cricket with 107. He passed Adam Gilchrist's record of 100 in his final Test match. This record was also previously held by Chris Cairns. Brendan McCullum was the first batsman to score two centuries in 2020 international cricket 116 asterisk versus Australia and 123 versus Bangladesh. Brendan McCullum held the record for the highest individual score in 2020 international cricket, when he scored 123 versus Bangladesh at Palakele. He lost the record to Aaron Finch who scored 156 asterisk against England at Southampton. Chris Cairns and his father Lance Cairns are one of the two father-son combinations to each claim 100 test wickets, South Africa's Peter and Sean Pollock being the other. Martin Guptill scored the highest score in World Cups with 237 asterisk in 2015. Guptill holds the record for most career runs 2,271 and most sixes 103, equal with Chris Gale in 2020 internationals, both records previously held by Brendan McCullum. John Bracewell was the first, and so far only, substitute fielder to take four catches in a one-day international, versus Australia in Adelaide on 23 November 1980. Daniel Vittori was the first cricketer to take four wickets and score a half-century in each innings of a test match, a feat he achieved against Bangladesh in October 2008 at Chittagong. His figures were 5 95ths and 4 74ths with the ball and 55 asterisk and 76 with the bat. Colin Monroe is the first player in to score three 2020 international hundreds. This was accomplished on Wednesday 3 January 2018 against the West Indies when he scored 104 off 88 balls, with three fours and ten sixes. Chris Harris holds the record for the most ODI caught and bold dismissals, with 29. Notable. New Zealand dismissed Zimbabwe Harare 2005 twice in the same day for totals of 59 and 99. Zimbabwe became only the second team after India at Manchester in 1952 to be dismissed twice in the same day. The whole test was completed inside two days. This feat was then repeated at Napier in 2012 when NZ dismissed Zimbabwe for 51 and 143 to end the match within three days. Kane Williamson holds the record for most centuries by a New Zealander in tests, with 18. Brendan McCullum holds the record for the highest test innings by a New Zealander of 302 versus India in 2014. He is currently the only triple centurion from New Zealand. Brendan McCullum holds the New Zealand test record for the most innings of 200 or more, with 4. Brendan McCullum scored the fastest World Cup 50 off 18 balls for New Zealand in a Pool A match of 2015 Cricket World Cup against England, beating his own 20-ball record set against Canada in World Cup 2007 earlier. Martin Guptill holds the record for the highest one-day international innings by a New Zealander, with 237 not out against West Indies in the 2015 World Cup quarterfinal in Wellington. Shane Bond took an ODI hat-trick in the last over innings bowling figures, 1-0-0-6-1-4 versus Australia at Hobart in January 2007. Tim Southey took a 2020 hat-trick, taking 5-18 in the match against Pakistan. Colin Monroe scored the second-fastest T20 international 50, off 14 balls, against Sri Lanka at Eden Park, Auckland on 10 January 2016. 
Chris Harris, Daniel Vittori and Chris Cairns are the only New Zealand cricketers to have taken 200 wickets in Otis. Chris Harris and Chris Cairns are the only two New Zealand cricketers to complete the 4,000-run, 200-wicket double in Otis. The others are Sri Lankan Sanath Jayasuriya, South African Jacques Callas, Pakistani Shahid Afridi and Abdul Razak and Bangladeshi Shakib Al Hassan. See also New Zealand Maori cricket team List of New Zealand cricketers List of New Zealand first-class cricket records New Zealand national cricket captains New Zealand women's cricket team Beige Brigade Black Cap supporters <laughs>